Hey, thanks for joining us at the table. I'm Fiona. Joining me for a chat, these fabulous ladies, Shona. Morning. Rachel hey. and Melody. Hi. It's been a while. You've been away? Yeah, I have. How was it? I was pretty, pretty good. Where did you go? Um, America. <gasps> yeah. Good to have you back. Thanks. Coming up, us ladies talk about how yelling at your child is apparently the new parenting no-no. We get real on doing life with a spouse who has mental health issues. Get your posture on point with some quick tips from Alicia and so much more. So keep it locked right here at the table. But up first, a student in NZ has petitioned their school, sorry, New Zealand, to ban Mufti days, you know, casual clothes. When you don't have to wear school uniforms, saying it causes anxiety and places a lot of stress on poorest students who live in fear of being labelled or being bullied for having old or uncool clothing. Rachel, do you agree with this guy's point of view, this student's point of view, that, you know, it, some kids are up for being labelled if they don't have the cool clothes? I think that always happened. I mean, I think growing up, my brother my, my brother used to ask for the name brand shoes and my mum would come and bring, you know, if it said Nike, it was like Nico or something, you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> And you do get made fun of by the other kids, you know, but I guess in some ways it makes you resilient. I can understand where he's coming from because my mom actually made us wear uniforms. Before the entire school decided to implement uniforms as her petition, she made us wear uniforms. So we were the walking billboards for uniforms in our school before they actually put them in place. And I guess it does create that level playing field where kids can just think about school. Mm -hmm. Shona, you've worked in a school environment. Did you ever witness kids being isolated because of the kind of clothes they were wearing? Yeah, well, I still do, and I do see it. I see kids who can't afford to or don't want to wear clothes on Mufti Day, casual day, and they come in their school uniforms. And I sort of think... I wonder if they're bullied I wonder, or teased even, even if it doesn't go to the extreme of bullying. Do they get teased? Do they feel different? You know, and I, I agreed with this young guy that, you know, maybe we should have... But then I do wonder, though, the thing is, OK, say, for example, they, they're not of a low, lower socioeconomic class, kids are going to find anything to bully. So no matter That's, what you wear, yeah. even if it's, you know, branded, top-of-the-line yeah, stuff... You could be bullied for wearing, you know, trying to be the latest fashionista. Yeah. So I but don't I think, know yeah. if, it, if it will... You know, it can work either way. They're trying to just prevent as many things as possible because kids will be kids. They will find things to make fun of. Um, but, yeah, I guess trying to create that environment where kids can focus on learning, yeah. I think, is a smart idea. But then where do you draw the line if you're going to protect kids from as many things as you can, as uh, in all scenarios as you can? I well, mean, then we become a nanny state, don't we, and they're not allowed to do anything. What about us as women? Do you find that there's pressure, you know, for us to look a certain way? Um, have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to look a certain way to fit in with other women? Nah. Because women... <laughs> <laughs> women dress for other women. Women dress Do for we? other women. No, yeah, I don't. You don't, you don't, you don't well, maybe because I don't have girls, it doesn't worry me. I just throw on whatever I can find. Yeah, I know in the Bible it talks about, you know, not worrying about what you wear. Mm. And um, it also says in Matthew, not to worry about life. Uh, do not worry about what you will wear. Each day has it's enough trouble of its own. And yeah, it does. <laughs> it's true, right? <laughs> We've got more things to worry There's about. There's bigger things to worry about than what we're going to wear. Yeah, but I think even in school communities, do you think we should help um, other children, if you know of, um, if they're, you know, finding that they don't have the cool clothes or whatever, should we have like a clothing pool or something like that? I think I think that's a great idea. Um, yeah, I think that growing up we had that we would pass clothes from one to another. Yeah, even if it's different schools, school exchange, swap, swapping yeah. schools and I'm, things like that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not detracting from the fact that, yes, we need to help people who are in need, but then shouldn't the focus be more on the fact that we need to be less focused on how we look and, you know, what the cool, cool clothes are? Is that, is that, does that really matter at the end of the day? And is that something that we should be teaching our kids in the end that, you know, Cool clothes don't really matter. Well, it goes back to teaching your kids at home that clothes shouldn't make a person, you know, look more, I guess, about relationships and how that person makes you feel or make you make them Store feel. Store your treasures, treasures somewhere else. Yeah, that's it. That's it, Shona. Say it again. Store your treasures in heaven. Here we go. <laughs> right here. Do you think Mufti Days should be banned from schools? Drop us a line and let us chat more on Facebook, Instagram or our YouTube page. But now it's time to get your back into it. Alicia's got some tips on correcting bad posture. Hey, Alicia here, your resident personal trainer at The Table TV Show. Today we're going to look at a couple exercises to correct bad posture. So, girls... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Do any of you suffer from bad posture? Oh, no, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Put your shoulders back. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and is that from work? Like, do, are, are you desk workers or are you just in general of over time? Yeah. Work, just over time. Laziness. Everything. Yep. All of yep. the above. It's really an epidemic, really, in our society because we're just not as active as we were. And, you know, obviously the more sedentary lifestyles that we're living, you would get these rolled forward shoulders, um, all this tightness in our neck and our back. And so it's really important that we, we are doing a few things to correct that or else over time it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So I'm just going to share three really quick exercises that you can do. And I am going to use one bit of equipment for one of them, but um, aside from that, the other two you don't need any. So if you don't have a resistance band at home or whatever, it's fine. Um, the first is just a chest stretch. So I'm going to get you, Rach, to imagine that I'm a wall mm -hmm. and you just, or a door even, like the, a doorway, you're grabbing my yeah. shoulder and you're going to pull away okay. your body. Yep, the other direction. Yeah, that's right. And if your arm's sort of out a bit longer, so, yep. And then just pull away and you should feel a stretch in here in that side yep. of your chest. Okay, yep. so that's gonna help open up the chest because this is the problem. We're all like tight and weak here and overstretched at the back. So we need to pull back. Pull the muscles out. Yeah, and sort of open them up and hold. So can you kind of feel yeah. that in there? Yeah. Awesome. The next one is gonna be with the resistance band. I'm gonna get you, Rach, on the couch to help. And if you give her the handle, so there we go. If you've got a resistance band or you can do this um, with a seated row machine at the gym, um, all you're going to do is get that, set that chest nice and proud and you want those shoulders sort of back and down. And then you're going to pull in towards nice. your tummy. Yep, elbows going straight back. And if you kind of hold it in there, say for three, two, one, then release slowly. Can you feel that? Yeah, yeah. Where can you feel it? So I can feel it in here mostly, right? Yes, yeah. yep, good. And what you want to imagine is that you're sort of pulling your shoulder blades together yep. at the back. Awesome, and sort of relax that neck as well in again yeah so how many of those should we be doing yeah I would be doing sort of like 12 to 15 of those and doing maybe three sets and that, if you were doing if you really got posture problems I'd be doing this you know every day or every other day to sort of really start correcting it now the third oh sorry yeah is, is the posture problem because of lack of strength or because of lack of stretching the muscles it's both so you've got weakness in the front and you've got tightness in the back so you're sort of trying to open up here and relax back here. So it, it is a, a matter of both, yeah, and sort of getting those shoulders to go back down into the position they're meant to be for good posture and, and learning to make that sort of the norm rather than this, the norm. It's really hard because you know, when you're in front of a computer. Yes. Yeah, that's why, have you seen those ergonomic um, standing de desks now where it's getting people to stand up so they're not hunched over, like that stuff's great. So really quickly, let's come down onto the floor and this is called a prone Y stretch. Prone just means that you're face down on the ground and you're going to take your hands out like Rach has here and sort of rest your head down so your neck's relaxed. And what you want to do is as you pull your shoulder blades down and in, sort of on, a, on an X shape, so you're kind of pulling it towards your opposite back pocket, if that makes sense. You're going to do that and lift your arms up in a Y. So just do that for me, Rach. Y. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Y. Okay, and do it once more. See if you can hold it up there for three, two, one. Good. Okay, so those three exercises, it's just a way that you can start to correct that posture. Now, one of the workouts on our YouTube channel is all about that. If you jump over there, um, do the shoulder Pilates workout, you will get your posture back. Statistics show one in four Australians experience a mental health condition and in New Zealand a recent health survey indicated that one in six adults had been diagnosed with a common mental disorder. In fact, women are more likely to experience psychological distress than men, which is why joining us now we have writer and editor Jared Sakharov, who's here to share his journey of living with a spouse who has mental health issues. Thanks for joining us, Jared. Thank you, Fiona. Now, I know, um, you know, people with mental health don't necessarily know that they are dealing with some certain issues. Yeah. Being married to someone who has mental health, how early in the relationship did you realise, hmm, something's going on here? Look, um, Fiona, it was quite early, thankfully. Um, I knew what I was walking into, but without fully understanding what that looks like. Um, my wife, it was probably... What does it look like? Well, it was probably a few months after we were dating and my wife told me about a situation that had happened to her early in her childhood. 
and that had set her on the path to mental illness. She had struggled as a teenager, um, but it hasn't, hadn't been treated properly at the time. And then down the track, um, it, it sort of pops its head up every year or every couple of years, and it just, it just comes back this real season of discouragement and darkness that comes through from um, her depression. So, yeah, um, what was your question? <laughs> well, pretty much how early in the relationship? How early? So it, was it was very early very on. Early. Um, we were open with each other. We always wanted to have yeah. that as part of our relationship. Yeah. So she told me straight up that she had suffered this experience, that things weren't all 100% right. But as I said, um, it doesn't sink in necessarily. You love someone. Yeah. You're, you're filled with the, the happy hormones. You yeah. know, you're in the honeymoon phase. So yeah. you're like, yeah, this is great. This is fantastic. I'll do anything for you. And then you realise actually, maybe I didn't quite know what, what I was What were those into. signs? What exactly were those signs? Um, Do you remember? Yeah, I, I mean, sharing with me was very difficult for my wife. And I think just after that, it's, it made her relive some of the things. And so we sought GP, we sought counselling. And I'd say to any of the viewers, like, if you're struggling with something, you need professional help. Like, But sometimes you're in denial. You're in denial, yeah. And so she struggled to um, make that first step. Right. So, and so you we, were there to encourage. I was encouraging her, um, but you can't necessarily push someone in this state because the more you push, the more they do the opposite of what, what you're saying. Yeah. Part of depression is isolating yourself away from people, mm -hmm. even the people that love you yeah. and you love them back. So um, we sought help. We went to counselling. She was afraid to do it herself. Yeah. So I went with her to those sessions. I sat there and, and let them talk it through. Um, she got put on some medications and things that really threw her health around. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the signs was for about two weeks she couldn't get out of bed. Right. She was just completely wiped out. Was depression? Out. Was her mental health It was, issue? but the drugs didn't help. So some of those things, I mean, that drug didn't help. So they tried about five or six different ones before they could find something mm -hmm. that did help. So that's the journey. So how long did it take before you went and saw professional help? Because um, you would have had to put up with certain... Well, not put up with, you would have had to live with yes. um, someone who was, you know, temperamental at times. Yeah, 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 definitely. Look, and yourself as a carer would have yes. also reacted. Yeah, it wasn't too long um, that first time. So this is the thing. That first time she was helped and she got a lot better through the counselling and different things. And then we were fine. We were cruising along for sort of five years. We were married happily. Things were going well. And then all of a sudden back it comes. There's this mm. season again. I, I call it a season. Um, she calls it her pity parties. <laughs> That's her, her sort of pet name for it. Um, and we don't always know it's coming. Yeah. So I get the signs that she's a bit uptight. She's going off about things that she wouldn't normally be bothered by. Mm -hmm. there's, there's certain things that so tick her out off. out of out of character? Very out of character, very irrational sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it starts to, you see the cracks starting to appear, but often you're not aware that she's struggling with yeah. these things until you're right in the middle of it. Yeah. And then you're like, uh-oh, now I know what's happening. Like, this so is we, where we we've are. We've talked a lot about how it's impacted her. Yes. How has it impacted your life? Look, I have struggled, and this is why I'm writing about it yeah. and, and talking about it, because I think not everyone who is supporting a family member with this stuff, there's a lot of awareness about there's a mental health day, you know, there's Are You OK Day. Mm. But what about the people who support and yeah. help those people? Yeah. So some of the things for me, um, it's, it's, it's like a very mild form of depression sometimes because you, you feel... As the carer? You feel pressured, right. you feel stressed, you feel like you're walking on eggshells. If I do the wrong thing in my relationship, she might go worse. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to make her worse. I love her. I yeah. want her to be better. I know you, so, you wrote an article, actually, yes. which is Never Lose Heart, and it's going to be featured in an upcoming um, issue of the At The Table magazine, so do subscribe right. to that yep. for Jared's yep. article. Never Lose Heart. And you write, my wife suffered severe ongoing abuse as a child. It left her with scars. You go on to say, they are left for me to heal, to bind up and comfort her. When I read that, I felt like, is this your outcry for help? Is that what a lot of people who are, you know, living with someone who they love, um, they need, they need... And so you wrote about your experience yeah. and shared your own, I guess, frustration. Is that what it was? It was, it was in, a, in, a, in a real, very real sense, it was my heart's cry. I, I was struggling with this, um, struggling with supporting her, and I was like, how do I, how do I deal with this? Um, I've recently finished my Master's in creative writing, and I was 
studying trauma narratives. So the power of these stories as we tell them to heal the reader, to heal those who hear them, and, and the healing power of stories in general. And I truly believe that. I'm a Christian. Um, there's a lot of broken people in the Bible. And those stories are told without fear, without sort of holding anything back. It's like we get the warts and all version. And that, I think, helps us as people to go, hey, I can relate. I can, I can understand what this person's going through. So that's really important to me to tell that, that story. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, like I said before, there's a lot of people dealing with this. I feel like there's a lot of people dealing with this and it's not talked about. Dealing with the carer side deal of it. Dealing with helping someone you love mm -hmm. who's going through something that's a very difficult thing that you can't actually fix. Well, we have so many support groups for other things. You know, um, the parents or friends of someone who's committed suicide or who yes. has al alcohol abuse problems. Have you found that you need to get counselling yourself to mm. support you through this? At this point, I haven't gone to that that place but I do um, I have at our church we have a men's group a small group and I was able to share as I was going through some of this with them mm -hmm. and they supported me they helped me getting it off your chest and talking to someone is half the battle in this situation because they isolate themselves so they don't want to talk about it they don't want to let anyone know that something's wrong there's and a you, stigma. There's you a stigma feel you it. have to Respect that. Mm. You have to hold that end of the bargain up. And so you don't. You don't seek help. You don't do that. So I, I'd encourage anyone who's struggling with some of these things, talk to someone about it. And for it. men, it's terribly hard as well because you want men want to fix things. That's right. So you've got <laughs> this circle of I want to fix you yeah. and make things better, yeah. but I can't. You have to yeah. come to that point where you realise it's not up to you to fix. It's up mm. to you to love. Mm. I truly believe the power of love can help to heal some of this stuff. And prayer. And, and prayer. prayer and faith. Yeah. Like, I get my encouragement from those places. And Lena won't change when I tell her you have to do this. You should get more exercise. You should get sunlight. You should see someone get counselling. She doesn't change. Mm. But when I love her, I see changes happen because she feels safe. She feels accepted. She feels loved. So that's my experience. Yes, yeah. gonna actually ask It's you. so important, I think, just to seek professional help, as Jared has said, and talk to someone if you're feeling anxious, depressed or out of sorts. Thanks so much, Jared, for sharing your journey with us. And we hope and will continue to pray that you both never lose heart. If you want to read Jared's story, subscribe to the At The Table magazine by emailing us at hello at the table TV .com with your postal deets and we will get a copy out to you for free. Thank you so much, Jared. Thank you. But now Gia and Olive are making apricot bites. Let's watch this. Four. Four. Owl. Owl. What? Apricot bites for our lunchbox. For our lunchbox, that's right. These are not, these are an awesome idea for lunchboxes, any lunch, not just for kids, but for adults as well. They're a good treat, they're delicious, and I keep saying delicious, don't I? Sorry. Whoa! Ow. We lost her. Come on, up you get. <laughs> You need to just stand on it without moving. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Sorry, I'm glad you can have one, yes. So what we need is one third of a cup of... Um, okay, one cup of... Um, one third of a cup of sunflower. <laughs> Sorry, it was funny when we lost her. Just wait, just wait. Okay. So you grind it first, and I use a coffee grinder. Now, coffee grinders are so much more fancy right now, these days, but this is like an old one from like the early 2000s. And it was 20 bucks, but you can get cheaper ones now. And I just grind my seeds in it, but some people have those, uh, what are they called, the um, mixers, those Vitamix ones. That's it, done. That's it, we don't want it to be too grounded, okay? All right, so the one third of ground Sunflower seeds go straight in the food processor. Okay, there we go. So it's not protein balls exactly, but you, I guess there's some protein in it. And one cup of, what are these? Apricots? Apricots. Apricots, dried apricots or semi-dried apricots. Two tablespoons of maple syrup. Two and a half tablespoons of psyllium husk and three tablespoons of water. That was easy. And I've got one cup of just desiccated coconut. So just one cup of desiccated coconut and you just throw it all in there. And we are just going to mix that. 
until it's all combined really well. OK, where's the on button? OK, so you're going to have to scrape the sides down. So you can do that maybe once or twice. OK, I reckon that's heaps. I reckon that's enough. All right, are you ready to help me roll them into little balls? OK, let's show them how it's done. I'm going to put that there. And I might take this out as well. Are you going to help me, Litz? OK. So put your hand in and grab... We'll have to roll it in some coconut here, OK? Would you like to make a little ball out of it like this? Like a little bite? A bite size? So you don't want to make it huge, do you? So you just roll it into the size that you want just like into a little ball like that, a bite size, and roll it into some coconut. Oh, that looks awesome. Now, if you put these in the fridge, they'll last a while and they'll firm up a bit too, so even better. So that's what it looks like. Can you see that? And, ah, let me see your... Whoa, that's a huge bite one. Okay, and we're going to cut one in half because we want you to see it. Okay, there we go. Roll it in, roll it in. Would you like these for your lunchbox? Mm hmm Mmm, very healthy. Okay, I'm going to take a bite. Do you want to take a bite? No? I'll do it. Are you sure? You're going to love it. Mmm. It almost tastes like almond meal in the middle because of the texture. If you want some more yummy recipes and lunchbox ideas, go to our website thetabletv.com or follow us on Facebook, The Table TV Show. See you next time. Have you made them? Yeah, well, similar ones, yeah, little balls and they just pop in. It's quite fun to mm. eat. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a good, healthy alternative, I think. Looks great. Thanks, Gia and Ollie, for that. Um, but we are actually giving away a health and happiness uh, cookbook for free. So be sure to get your copy. All you need to do, email us at hello at thetabletv.com. The details um, of this book are health and happiness, and we will get it out to you as soon as possible. All you need to do, phone us, 1-300-300-389. If you're in Australia and if you're in New Zealand, the number is 0800-694-673. So do get your copy, health and happiness, and also your details. Well, if you didn't know now, now you will. Apparently, we shouldn't be yelling. It damages children's emotional well-being and can be as bad, if not worse, than physical abuse. Instead, we're supposed to pull our naughty kids in closer, listen, soothe and work out what's really going on together. Does this make sense when you're in the heat of the moment, your child's acting up? What do you think about this research, Shona? <laughs> 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 your, your face says it let's, all. Let's hold hands and sit together and as sing, she and said, sing kumbaya. Sing kumbaya. <laughs> I mean, goodness me. <laughs> but to be honest, it actually worked once for me. So I'll just say once. Because there was one, you know, Alex, being a toddler, doesn't want to eat his vegetables and stuff like that, really, I got really quite upset at one time. I was like, eat your vegetables! Didn't work. And then the next thing I tried, right, was just like really calmly saying to him that I really would like you to eat this. Can you please eat it? And the mouth opens and he chews it. So... But I think every child is different and I don't... I think we're too much experts at telling parents what to do, you know, in different mm -hmm. situations. We're raising robots who eventually are going to yell back I, at I us. loved <laughs> so this article because she was, she was being a normal mother. Yeah, she, she was, was saying yelling. Yeah. saying it how it is. And, I mean, if your kids... Uh, acting up like mine are teenage, nearly young adults now and the only way I'm going to get through to them when they're fighting and scrapping with each other is scream at them because they're not hearing me if I'm going, darling, don't hit your brother. Please don't hit your brother. <laughs> Let's talk darling, about it. Darling, sit in the corner and don't hit your brother. Yeah. He's not going to listen to me. I think there need to be ranges of volume. Like Sometimes <laughs> you need to use that quiet voice because sometimes yes. my mom's quiet voice could scare me more than the loud voice. Mm. Like just a look could scare me, you know, or if they get really quiet, that means something. That look when you're sitting in church and you're not behaving, <laughs> exactly. that one worked wonders for me. To me, that one was stronger than actually yelling at me. 
me. Yeah. I don't think one size fits all, though, to say to, you know, to say to parents, you shouldn't be yelling at them, you shouldn't be smacking. So what are we supposed to be doing? Talk, really, like, you cannot negotiate with an infant. You cannot negotiate with a, you know, I think different ages mean for different disciplines. But potentially, I'm, I'm just wondering about what the experts are saying, right? I mean, if you're yelling at a child 24-7, that's probably not great. That's abuse. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so maybe, well, let's just take it from the point of view, maybe the experts are just saying don't yell at your child 24-7. There's issues, <laughs> apparently, with yelling your child. They, they get, apparently, worse behaviour. It can lead to anxiety, depression. But Who so wants to be yelled at, though? Like, even yeah. in real life? Well, that's, well, that's yeah. another point. What happens when your child starts yelling at you? Mm. Do we... Smack! Are, are they going to turn around and say, Mum, we really need to talk about this? <laughs> in a real well, quiet well my life. boys do now. Okay. They, they say, they're please teenagers. don't yell. Yeah, they're let's teenagers. talk about this sensibly. Have you had don't to change yell. your approach? Yeah, I've had to change my approach. And my husband's had to change too. And the cat disappears when everybody starts yelling. <laughs> well, you can't get your point across when no, starts, no. everyone starts yelling. No. I know in the, in the book of Proverbs it talks about whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. So we should be able as parents to correct our child which way we see fit. Mm. So I'm a bit like whatever with the research. But there's also a verse that says a soft answer turns away wrath, you know? So I think that um, sometimes just bringing it down, bringing the temperature of the house down when everyone can calm down and talk about things like in a normal, logical mm. way, it just makes everything a bit yeah. calmer. If your kid's about to go touch the oven and it's hot, like... Then you're going to yell. You're going to yell, yeah. you know? There's a time to yell. Yes. Do, you, your, do you, you think know? as parents we've lost the right to discipline our child? Oh, and yes. To, mm. there's, too, there's laws. Yeah, there's... it's a police state, nanny state for kids. Mm. Mm. And that's what you do behind closed doors stays behind closed doors. What do you mean, <laughs> what do you mean by that, Mel? Except there's so many there's so many devices now listening to that's you at your true. house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Interesting. So we've got a bunch of yellers here or screamers or no one's going to say, you know, plead the fifth. What, what's happening here? There's a time and place, I think. Yeah. yeah. Time and place. I, I have yelled, but at certain things and certain times, and I've done the quietly talking to him or giving them the look. You do what works for you at, at the, the time. time. And each child is different. Mm -hmm. Well, to yell or not to yell, that is the question. In the meantime, give us a yell online with your thoughts. We'd love to hear on you, Facebook, Instagram or YouTube. But now, we do love hearing from you and we thought we would share some of what our viewers are saying. So we'd love to give a shout out first to Eileen from Victoria. Um, she's She's been watching and she says, I watch your program at 4.30. I love it. It's so interesting and educational for me, although I'm a grandma. It's never too late to learn and teach the young ones how to live a good and healthy life. Props Ooh. to you, Gma, up there at 4.30. Oh, good on us, ladies. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, good on you. And Daryl from Western Australia has requested that our team pray for him and his family. Please pray for us as I'm currently undergoing chemo and want to witness to the nurses and patients in the ward. His wife is also expecting their first baby and we're praying for you, Daryl. Mm. All the best and congratulations if we don't speak to you before then. Jacqueline from Melbourne, loving the show, especially while up feeding my little one. The content is very interesting and relevant. And hey, it's that time of the show. Oh, oh. already? <laughs> already. We'd like to say thank you to Jared who was with us earlier um, uh, for sharing his story. We'll be praying for you as well, Jared and Lena. And don't forget, ladies, thank you for your insights and at home for viewing we'd love to hear from more feedback from you please send it in um, until next time god bless